and I just love it. So, oh! Whoa, she fell. And she fell hard, bitch. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well. Now... <laughs> Don't come for me. I'm a little bit concerned. Usually I wait until I've got about 20 books to do a book haul, which usually for me is like every three, four months, maybe. Like maybe even more, maybe about five. Um, so like, it's been two months since my last book haul. <laughs> After this I am going on a book buying ban. Well, kind of. I'm, I think I'm going to be going to Edinburgh in October and I want to do a similar video to my independent bookstore video in London. I want to do that in Edinburgh. So like, you c don't begrudge me like if I buy some books in Edinburgh. But I have 25 books here and I've been incredibly lucky that so many of you and my friends have sent me books, which is just incredible. So this book always basically happened thanks to other people sending me books, which is just crazy. Uh, I'm very, very thankful. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell button if you haven't already I can see how many people ring the bell and how many people get notifications and that makes a big big difference for me so make sure you I'm embarrassing yes 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 first we're gonna go through an order which I made because I knew I was making the book haul and there was just a few more books I wanted to get. These are kind of like my most anticipated books I've been lusting after. I know what's in here of course so it's not really an unboxing. First is Hood Feminism Notes from the Women White Feminists Forgot by Mickey Kendall. So this is a non-fiction book about the kind of negatives of white feminism and why white feminism is so bad <laughs> essentially. Um, I heard Kayla from Books and Lala a lot of books I buy because Kayla talks about one. I heard her speak so very highly of this. I love reading feminist nonfiction. I read quite a bit of it. This just sounded incredible. I have seen a lot of tweets from Mickey Kendall on Twitter as well. I mean, where else would you see tweets? <laughs> Facebook? Still got it. Never lose it. She just seems really, really insightful. My feminism is very intersectional, so I want to make sure I'm consuming literature that is very intersectional. And the main theory module that I have gotten to pick for my last year of uni is I'm doing a like intersectional feminism course. So I wanna make sure that I'm reading quite widely on my own. So I think this will be definitely be one that I pick up really, really soon. Next is Moon of the Crusted Snow by Warbgi Shig Rice. So the author of this is an indigenous author and indigenous literature is something that I have been really wanting to get into for the longest time more so. And this is about a community, an indigenous community, I believe, who has all of their power and communication cut off by this snowstorm. Some unexpected visitors arrive and the society sort of crumbles. And I think people start dying I think. I'm not sure whether that's through murder or through lack of resources and kind of having their, all their power cut off. Again I love the cover of this, the way that it's kind of muted and the way that the cover feels. This is probably out of all of these books one that I really want to fit into one of my vlogs very soon. I'm trying to figure out how I can fit this in. <laughs> What's the solution to that then? This just sounds so interesting, so thrilling and so tense and it's a very short book as well, it's only about 213 pages so I think it's one I could read in like a day feasibly. I can imagine this being like a one sitting book, the book that you just kind of devour. Okay next is a book I'm so excited to finally own. I have kept my eye on this on my wish list for so long and this book is so often like £20. There's no way in hell I'm paying £20 for a book, like not happening. But Every now and then it goes down to like £10, £11. And when it d went down to £11 this time, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna get it because you never know when it's gonna go back down again. It could feasibly never go back down again. I'd be stuck at £20 forever. And I just could not deal with that. So I purchased European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman by Theodora Goss. So this is actually the second book in a series. What was the first one called? Oh yeah, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, which was a book I read for my reading murder mystery books video. And I need an audiobook for that. So I just picked a random book off Scribd. I was really limited with what books I could pick on Scribd. And so it was like the only book choice I had. And I was like, this is only gonna be three stars. It's not gonna be good. But then I read it and and it was five stars. I loved the first book in this series so much. It's about daughters and female versions of classic men in kind of Victorian era classic fiction. So you have Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde's 
daughters. There's two of them. You have the female Frankenstein, you have Lucinda Van Helsing, who develop this found family with each other, and it's like a murder mystery. Sherlock and Watson are in this, but they play they play quite an important role in the first one, but they do not overpower the girl's story at all. It's still very much their story. And I just love it so much. <laughs> it's so amazing. And I would play it again and again and again and again. What I think is so brilliant is that one of the girls, is it Catherine? Catherine Moreau is the girl who's writing their story up. But as they're reading it, it breaks the fourth wall and they'll cut in and try and amend what Catherine has written. So let me find a page where there's quite a lot of it. Okay, so here you can see this is the normal story. And then these little bits are kind of written like a script where it'll say, Mary, Diana, Mary, because they'll be cutting in whilst reading the story along with you. I can't wait for the second one. I am, I think, going to listen along to the audiobook whilst I read it because the narrator does such a good job of bringing all the different girls to life. It's long as well. It's over 600 pages, but I'm so happy I finally own this. I love the cover so much. Like, I, this is one of my favourite cover designs ever. I got Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This is a dark academia mystery novel. It's, it's kind of, from what I heard, a bit difficult to describe, but you know I love dark academia. It's one of my favourite things things ever and I am actually gonna be co-hosting the September month of the Literary Dead book club with Kayla from Books and Lala it's her book club and she asked me to co-host this month with her and I am just so excited to read it and for you all to join us so there's obviously still time for you to pick this up Aaron from Booked and Busy is also gonna be co-hosting this month and I'm just so excited I'm so excited I'm so thankful that Kayla asked me and it's gonna be so much fun the next are some books that Molly my darling sent me um, I'll link her channel down below as I'll everyone's channels who I speak about in this video. She sends me too many books. Like, she just sends me books too often and I can't have it. Like, this girl needs to just spend her money on herself. Me to Molly. Your love is, is amazing. The way you love people is inspirational. You are the definition of unconditional love. But first she sent me The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant, which is such an amazing cover. I love it so much. Oh yeah, look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? All I know about this is that it is a Les Mis retelling from uh, is it Eponine's perspective? Yeah, it's from Eponine's perspective. And Eponine was always my favourite character back in the day when I used to watch Les Mis. I've seen it at the West End. It was brilliant. And I also loved the, uh, I used to love the Jonas Brothers. So when Nick Jonas starred in the one that they did in cinemas for like an anniversary edition, my God, I loved it. <laughs> I've heard so many wonderful things about this book. This kind of YA fantasy is something I'm really, really craving at the moment. Next, the Queen Herself Molly <laughs> sent me Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power. This is one of my most anticipated new releases. I think it came out about a month ago. And if you don't know, Rory Power is the author of Wilder Girls, which I loved. I haven't actually got it now because I lent it to my nan. <laughs> I believe this is an adult book, whereas Wilder Girls was YA, and I loved Wilder Girls this year when I read it a couple months ago. I really, really loved the weirdness, and the I love books with a concept, books that push the boundaries, and that's really what Wilder Girls did, so I cannot wait to get to Burn Our Bodies Down. I don't really know what it's about, to be quite honest with you. I don't really want to know what it's about. I know it's something to do with Margot, the main character, and her relationship with her mother, and the relationship with the rest of her family. Anything that Rory Power writes, I will read forever. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. And lastly, Molly sent me Pages and Code, Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales by Anna James. And she did buy me the first book in this series as well. We buddy read it together. And this is just a lovely middle grade series set in this bookshop that Tilly's grandparents own. And Tilly is able to book wander into stories and explore the stories that she loves and meet characters. The ending to the first book was lovely. I really can't wait to see where the rest of this story goes. I think this is a brilliant middle grade series. When I spoke about how sad this was. I don't know if it's sad. When I read the first one, I just kept imagining reading it to like my future child. <laughs> it's very strange. Uh <laughs> But I think it's just perfect for its target audience and it's something that I think everyone can enjoy. Everyone can love middle grade. Cannot wait to get to the second one in this series. I'm so happy that I own it. Next were a few books that I bought a while ago. First is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is the first book I bought when bookshops reopened. I have read both of Elizabeth Acevedo's other books and I think I gave them both like higher four stars. I really love them. But I'm yet to give her books a five star just because I'm always wanting a little bit more. Her books are fairly short and they're told in verse, so 
so it just goes so fast so although the characters are often really strong I am often wanting a little bit more in terms of plot whereas this book is not told in verse so I feel like I love Elizabeth Acevedo's writing so much I love her characters so much and I feel like this one will have a little bit more plot so I feel like this might be my first five star from Elizabeth Acevedo it is about a young teen mum who just wants to be a chef very much just centered around family like Elizabeth Acevedo's books often are oh I'm so excited to read this one next I bought an unwanted guest by Shari Lapina this is like a murder mystery as we all know murder mysteries are my favorite books I was like oh my god that shit took me caught me off guard I did not expect it I was chilling at home. This is about, I think, some guests who arrive at this remote inn. A violent storm occurs and they want to be trapped. And ah, oh, just, it's just like everything I love. And then they start dying. Ah, <laughs> I love it. This is one that a lot of you have recommended to me that it has a lot of my favorite tropes. It's very like the guest list I've heard, which is probably my favorite thriller ever. Ah, I'm so excited to read this one. And then another kind of mystery book I have bought is The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Massey. So this is set in 1920s India. Again, I asked you guys for mystery books you think I would enjoy. I may be doing a video on it soon, I can probably guess. After a while, I was really asking for authors of colour who have written mystery or murder mystery books because I think that the murder mystery <laughs> genre is so white. Like, it's so white. It's a real struggle to find well-known, popular books by authors of colour. So that is the main reason I bought this one. I wanted to read some murder mystery books authors of colour and I'm really excited for it to be set in 1920s India. I think that is a really interesting setting that I have never read from before so I'm so excited to get to this really really soon and I think this is something to do with like a wealthy Muslim mill owner has left behind three widows and all three of the wives have signed over their full inheritance to a charity which I think our female protagonist detective thinks is very strange and tension start to rise and murder eventually occurs and it's up to the detective to find out what is really going on. So very excited to get to this one. I say that about every fucking book. You're probably very irritated. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Yes. You're a dreamer. You dream a lot in your sleep. No, not really. I'm not. Yes, you do. No, I Yes, don't. you do. Next, my love Nicole, who again, you should definitely subscribe to if you haven't already, sent me The Wicked Kin by Kay Ankrum. I've heard so many, so many wonderful things about this. I know this is about two boys and their relationship. I'm not sure if they it's a romance or whether they're just friends. I can't remember. But I know that their relationship in whatever form it is holds a big role in this story. But Something that is very cool about this is that I believe as one of their mental states decreases, the pages become darker and darker to kind of represent that. Frankly, I think it's embarrassing. I haven't read any of their books yet. <laughs> Next, three amazing books were sent to me by a subscriber called Lauren. She sent me Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, and Emma by Jane Austen. So I had really wanted these editions from Vintage Classics. I love I love how they look so much. Looks are fierce. Personality, fierce. But challenge, they're fierce as well. I have read Persuasion by Jane Austen and I read Pride and Prejudice a very long time ago when I was like 10. I read it with my mum. But I really want to make my way through all of her books because I just love her. Like I love Jane Austen. I think reading a Jane Austen book is very therapeutic. Like it really takes you out into a different vibe, a different era. And I just love it. So, ooh! She fell. She fell hard, bitch. No books were harmed, everything's fine. <laughs> thank you so much, Lauren, for getting these for me. I couldn't find your Twitter, so I haven't actually been able to thank you directly, but this is me saying thank you, and please comment down below so I can say thank you properly, because ah, I'm just so excited to own these, and I just love these editions so much. I think they're so beautiful. Okay, and then the next two books are books I bought my mum for her birthday, but I'm going to read them. I bought them because I want to read them as well. <laughs> Like of all the books on her list, I was like, I'll buy the two I want to read. <laughs> so the first is The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. I still haven't read Station Eleven. I don't own it. I need to, but I think I'm probably going to end up reading this first. I don't know much about this. I think it's a lot to do with money from what I've heard. It's a very strange book. And when I hear people try to describe this, they really struggle. I know this about this glass hotel and about the characters who encounter the hotel. I'm very excited to get into Emily St. John Mandel's stuff. I love this cover so 
much. I love kind of mysterious, confusing books, and I feel like this is what this is gonna be, so very, very excited to get to this. And then the other book I got for her was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is a book I've heard so many people talking about. I love the color scheme we've got going on of this blue. I mean, look at that, aren't we obsessed? She's huge, but she's so beautiful. This is, from what I've heard, a very, very difficult book for people to read. It is about a girl who had a relationship with her teacher when she was very young. I think she was like 14. Someone has now come out and accused him of sexual abuse, of a very similar relationship to that of they had. And I think at the start of the book, she's very in denial about how damaging and maybe wrong their relationship was. And it's about her coming to terms with how she herself was abused at the time. I've heard it is a very heavy book, but I think it's a very important book and a book that should be read. The next two books were sent to me by Claire. Thank you so much, Claire. I've already said a big thank you to you. She is just so, so lovely. But the first book she sent me was Nine Elves by Robin Brazender. This is a thriller that she highly recommended to me and so she very kindly sent it to me. From what I know, the protagonist of this was a young female police detective when she caught this notorious serial killer, but then 10 or 15 years later, this copycat killer has sprung up and is killing again and she wants to find them again. From what I know, Claire spoke so very highly of this and I love thrillers. I'm just very, very excited to get to this one and it sounds scary. <laughs> Clap if you've ever wanted to kill somebody. And then she also very kindly got me Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is one of my most anticipated releases again. I have read all of Alice Oseman's other books and I love Heartstopper by Alice Oseman also, which is hiding here. I can't get them out. I read all her other novels on audiobook. This will be my first reading it physically. So I'm interested to see how that is a different kind of experience. It is about a character and them figuring out sexuality in particular, whether they are maybe asexual or a romantic. I know this is a very personal book for Alice Oseman. I have read a lot of mixed opinions from Own Voices reviewers who identify as asexual. I think some people have mixed feelings over whether they identify personally with the portrayal of asexuality in this. So I am very excited to read this. I love Alice Oseman's stuff, but I think I'm going to be very aware of those mixed reviews going into it. Okay, so next are two books again I bought myself much more recently. The first is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. I bought this <laughs> at the time of the reading rush. <laughs> when it was the group book and I knew it was going into it I knew I wasn't going to be able to read the book during the reading rush but I wanted to purchase it as well because it's a book that I'm very excited for and I've heard so many good things obviously the hosts did not read the book which is a whole thing and um, I've spoken about it on Twitter and stuff but it was something I was very disappointed by and I think that the reading rush has a lot of introspective you know they need to really look at themselves and at the readathon and etc I wanted to read this now. I know the Black Hotties picked it as their book club book for this month. Um, I'm not sure when the live show is, but I don't think just with the videos I've got lined up, I haven't been able to fit it in. But it is one that I'm going to get to very soon. I know this is a book about performative activism. It's about a black woman who is babysitting for this rich white family where the mum is like this influencer. She takes the baby to a grocery store and gets accused of kidnapping the child because she is black and the child is white. And it is about kind of the performative activism that the white characters in her life perform after that incident. And I've just heard so many wonderful things about this. But also I think as a white person myself, I do want to look at not how like my activism is ever performative. Like I'm never looking for like a pat on the back or whatever, but how I'm probably doing some things wrong, you know? Like there's always room to learn and I really wanna use this to like look at that aspect of myself too, because I think as a white person, you need to be doing that constantly. You need to be re-evaluating how you support the people in your life who aren't as privileged as you. And then the other book that I bought was And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Now it's a bit ironic that I, <laughs> that I'm hauling this straight after purchasing such a fun age. I'm talking about performative activism because one thing that has put me off reading this book for such a long time is that this book did originally have a very racist 
title. However, I am doing a video where you have picked what I'm reading and this was a book that came up a lot and so you guys have picked it and so I'm gonna be reading it. I love this cover, I love the Art Deco style of it and I think with Agatha Christie, like, there is racism in her books and if you're gonna read them, you need to be very aware of that and call that out when you see it. I am very excited to get to this. It is a book I really think I'm gonna love. It has that isolated group where people get start getting picked off, which is my favourite thing, as we all know. I love it. I love it. And it gives me that buzz. It's It feeds exactly what I want to do. The last books I have here are books that my parents have bought but I'm including them in this haul because I am going to read them. <laughs> the first of which I'm so excited but also terror- like I- I'm so scared. I'm so scared to read this. Oh my god. One piece of advice, don't read anything. If you don't read it, it can't harm you. The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kwan. Okay, so my dad has already read this. He is reading the series also and he said like, holy fuck, you're going to go through it. <laughs> I didn't say that exactly. So if you don't know, this is the sequel to The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, which is one of the most emotionally taxing books ever. It's a brilliant fantasy book where we follow Rin as she goes to a military training school from poverty to going to this most elite military school in the whole country. And it's about fire gods and Rin making questionable decisions at times. Just pure brilliance. The Poppy War was amazing. It was five stars. I am terrified. I'm, so I'm so scared to read this book. Not only is it massive, I'm so scared for what all the characters are about to go through in this book. I'm terrified. But yeah, I'm so happy that he got this and he's read it and loved it. So that is very promising. Next two books my mum bought, oh no, three books my mum bought. First is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Avaristo. This is one of the most popular books ever. <laughs> Recently it won the Booker Prize last year. So I believe this follows like tw 10 or 12 or something like that, different characters in Britain, examining race in Britain and it's just, it seems to be a masterpiece. Oh, it's told very interesting. Oh my God, I didn't realize it was told like that. This has made me much more excited. I can't, how do I describe how this is told? It seems to be told in like a lot of short paragraphs. I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. So I can't wait to get around to it. I said about every book. I said about every book. <laughs> Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. And then the other book she got, which I'm not like as excited for, but I'm gonna read it eventually, is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I don't really know what this is fucking about. I know it's popular. I have nothing really to say. <laughs> I'm gonna read this eventually, probably in like four years, if we're honest with ourselves. Oh, someone's found dead. Oh, that makes it a lot more exciting to me. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe this will kind of be the kind of book I put off for years and then it's like a new favourite book. And then the last book we're not really going to talk about, but my mum bought Midnight Sun and I've already read this and I've got a whole vlog on it and I hated it and I hated it so much and I hated it so much. And my mum still hasn't read it and she's about to read it and I'm just like, Jenny, I'm praying for you because <laughs> it's not good. Hot trash, hot trash, hot trash. Don't read it. It's bad. Should never have read it. Wasted a week and a half of my life reading it when I could have been reading some of these wonderful books. She's out of my life. In the words of... In, in the, the words, words of the of king of pop, Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson. She's, she's out, out of my life. life. <laughs> if you want to know more about why I hated this, go watch the vlog. It was very traumatic. We don't need to speak any more about it. So there we have it. That is all of my recent books which I bought. Let me know if you've read and loved any of these because I need to know which ones to prioritise. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!